Yuck. It's a rainy overcast day. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. It is a rainy overcast day. That means it is a great day to play with solar panels. This is a solar meshtastic repeater. I got this from another ham and I think what we should do on a gloomy day like today is take it apart, figure out what makes it tick. Let's get to the workbench. I guess first off, I have a bunch of stuff on the workbench. This is an AEA pack rat device that we've been playing with on ham nuggets. And we're gonna play with this some more on Monday night's ham nuggets coming up, but I'm not gonna play with it right now. Now we have an empty space on the desk and nature abhors a vacuum. So we need to become unmessy. This has a solar panel. This is a five volt solar panel, 705. It, all it says is 705A. And I know that it's not putting out 705 amps. I don't see a decimal point. I don't see anything like that. So I'm guessing that's some kind of model number, not a description of its output power. And there is no other description of its output power. This is a USB-C cord. This is a typical solar panel that you would find for charging up an outdoor wireless camera. So there we go with that. This is a pretty awesome box. R-T-H-I-E-A-I. I can't even begin to pronounce that. I don't know why they call it something like that. It has an alpha 915 antenna. This is probably gonna be the easiest part to find is the antenna. This is a 915 megahertz antenna, which is tuned for the US Meshtastic band. And it has an N type connector on it. So it is waterproof if you do it all right. The box is, well, it even has measurements on it. It has an interior dimension of 100 by 150 by 70. It has an exterior dimension of 158 by 58. And then it comes with the mounting tabs on it. It doesn't come with the end type connector. We'll get into that when we get it open. And my goal here is to find out what the parts list is on this thing so that I can get you guys a list of parts in the description down below. So if you wanna build one of these, you can. The box itself actually comes with this part here in the bottom. For mounting stuff but what i see inside is a battery and this says eemb lp 003465 which doesn't mean a whole lot to me but then it goes on to say 3.7 volts at 2000 milliamp hours 7.4 watt hours so that's some information that we need coming off of the battery there is a jst connector and then this is the rack 5005-0 which is actually a really cool little device. This is designed so that you can put modules on it. And the module it has is the Rack 4631 Meshtastic control chip. So it has a spot for a LoRa antenna and a spot for your Bluetooth antenna. And it's interesting because you see Rack 4630 on here. And where you see that Rack 4630, that's actually the module that's encased in metal. And then the 4631 part is the block that, the PCB block that that is sitting on that then has the antenna connections and then mounts to the Rack 5005-0 board. And this thing actually has a little blinky light on it. So I guess when we were outside in the overcast, we got enough sunlight into the little solar panel to give it some charge. That's pretty cool. Down here is a U-Blocks GPS module that plugs into the Rack 5005-0. It has its own coax here that comes up to its antenna here, and this is the GPS antenna. For that external end type, it comes around here and back and around and plugs in there. So that's a U.FL connector that then routes all the way up here to the top of the box. And that's where you get your end type connector. And then down here, the solar panel, they cut the USB lead off of the solar panel and then found out what the positive and negative wires were, attached them to another JST connector. What I find interesting is these two JST connectors, even though they're both two pin connectors, are two different sizes. So either A, we did that so that you didn't plug the solar into the battery and the battery into the solar, or B, we did that because we didn't think it through and it would have made more sense to have them both together. I don't know. There's room on here for another module. So you might be able to put like a temperature sensor or humidity sensor or some other type of sensor there, depending on what your goals are for this project. But this is a fantastic project box. I'm gonna be using these project boxes in the future coming up. I love the fact that it's got that little mesh backbone there that you can attach stuff to. If we look a little farther over here on the side, there is a Bluetooth antenna, and that runs to another U.FL connector on the rack board. So let's get over to Amazon, our favorite 
online superstore and figure out what all we can find to build one of these ourselves. This is a solar repeater. So this is gonna be something that you put up high, you put it up outside, and it is high gain, high strength, always on and waiting for you to send a message and then it's just going to repeat the message. If you happen to be within the 30 foot radius of Bluetooth from this device, then it is also capable of being your own personal Mesh-tastic node, which wouldn't be too bad, but you gotta be a pretty big homebody to just never leave the house and stay within 30 feet of your solar node. So this is going to be a fantastic way for you to get your signal from your normal Mesh-tastic device farther out into the neighborhood in your area and talk to other people on Mesh-tastic. The first part of this thing that we're going to need is the Rack 5005-0. This is the part of the kit that is the backbone, literally, no brains, just a wiring interface. And this will give us a whole bunch of other stuff going on. I guess there is a little bit of brains in here. There is a battery charging circuit. There's a micro USB plug. And then there's also the solar charge controller to go from five volts to charge the battery and keep this thing up and alive. So this is the Rack 5005-0. And I thought it was 5005-0 but Google quickly corrected me, which is nice. And it tells you all of the stuff about it, including the specs on the connector. So the lithium ion battery is a JST PHR-2 two millimeter female connector. And then you can choose a bunch of different WizBlock cores or a bunch of different WizBlock modules. Let's take a quick look at what some of those are. Yep, yeah, so these are the different radios that you can get. So this is the one that we have on our kit. IoT made easy by Rack, nice. So I guess that covers two of the parts that we need to get this done. Let's get back over and see if we can find these things on the Amazons. And here we go. I did a little bit of digging around. I'll save you some of the boredom of watching me shop. But what I found is there's actually a starter kit that comes with the module and the backbone and a little antenna. And what else does it come with? Oh, it comes with the Bluetooth antenna and some other antenna that we don't appear to have in our box. So this one here is the Bluetooth antenna that we do have, and then I don't know what this antenna here is. I'm gonna guess that this is the 915 Mesh-tastic antenna, but I'm not 100% sure. And then there's some information about the battery. Definitely wanna check your polarization. Make sure that the battery polarization matches up to the board polarization, and if it doesn't, switch it out. And there you go. That's what I was talking about earlier, where the chip itself is the 4630, and then the board that the chip sits on is the 4631. Cool, let's add that to our cart. Next up, we're gonna need that fancy enclosure, the, what do they call this thing? The R-T-H-I-E-A-I. I, I would name my company something better than that. It looks like it comes with the gland nuts in order to keep the water out. That's how the solar panel comes through the case. That's pretty cool. Comes in a bunch of different sizes. It has that mesh that I was telling you about for mounting stuff. It has stainless steel wall brackets for mounting it on the wall, or you can use that to zip tie it or bungee cord it to your mast to get it up in the air. Or you can even attach this directly to your high gain antenna if you have a high gain antenna. Waterproof, it, it did have a nice waterproof ceiling gasket in it. Yep, I would definitely put this thing outside and not worry about it once I get it all done and sealed up. All right, let's put that in the cart. So now we have the case and we have the starter board, which comes with the Mesh-tastic controller node and a couple of little antennas. We need to add in the GPS module so that everybody knows where this thing is and how far away from it is and they can track how far their signal's getting. Let's go take a look for that. All right, here is the GNSS GPS location module. So this will work in more countries than just the United States. It comes with the antenna and the coax cable with the U.FL connector and then there is the there's a little circuit board to put it on and it is U blocks. Let's go ahead and add that to the cart. We're just knocking out all the easy stuff right off the top. This is the alpha antenna and it is 5 dBi of gain it says right over here and it is 915 megahertz <laughs> maximum range 7 inches. I think whoever filled this out didn't know what they were talking about. The maximum height of the antenna is seven inches. I can I can agree to that. And it does have that end connector. And there's your front and side view. Let's add that one to the cart. And then we'll need a way to connect the end connector to the U.FL connector that is on the rack wireless board, on the WizBlock board. So here we have that thing. Let's add that to the cart. This looks like a compatible battery. You can go with a higher amperage hour. So the one inside of my kit was a 2000 milliamp hour. This one is a 3000 milliamp hour. It just means it's gonna last longer between charges. And what we're really interested in is the JST connector on the tail end of the battery. It says it in here. 
It's a type 2P pH 2.0 millimeter. And if we look over here, two millimeter, this says PHR2. So hopefully that's the right size. I, I searched around for a while to try and find these and I can't find anything that specifically says all these extra things, but JST and two millimeters are probably gonna get you right where you need to be. So we'll go ahead and add that to the cart. And then we need a solar panel. I took quite a while searching for the solar panel and what I came up with was we need to adapt this USB-C or micro USB connector over to a regular power lead and we're hams, we know how to do that. And this one here is a little bit better than the one that I have. You could screw this to the front of the board, maybe put some silicone on it or some RTV on it to make sure that the screw penetrations are still waterproof. Then you'll have the ability to pivot this towards the sun while the repeater is hanging off of the mast. Mine just kind of dangles down or I have to do some double-sided sticky tape or have to figure something out in order to point it towards the sunlight. I mean, you can get away with just sitting this thing on your roof and that'll be fine. But in order to find out the solar part, where is it? Solar charger optional, solar panel, Battery can be recharged as well by a small solar panel. The matching connector for the solar panel, here we go, is JST ZHR-2 1.5 millimeter pitch female. And I'm gonna guess that all the 1.5 millimeter pitches are ZHR-2. And then it says only five volt solar panels are supported. I saw 5.5 somewhere else. Do not use 12 volt, it will destroy the charging unit. And then it tells you where the ground pin is, so make sure you've got your polarization proper. But that's what we gotta do. We gotta go and look and do some research, and maybe it was on the data sheet. Support solar charging, two pin solar panel interface, solar panel connector, there it is. The output of the solar panel must not exceed 5.5 volts. So 5.5 volts will give you, you know, if you do all the, the Ohm's law math, it'll, it'll change the wattage output and the milliamp hours and so on, and it will charge a little bit faster than a five volt panel will. So let's go back to Amazon and look for that. So this is five volts, two watts via a type C port. And again, we're gonna cut that connector off and put something else on, but that looks like it's within the range. I'm gonna hit add to cart. And now we need that connector which is the JST ZHR2 1.5 millimeter pitch cable. And here's the JST cable. It is a mini micro ZH 1.5 two pin connector with wires. It's about $8 and you get way more than you'll ever need. So you'll have some spares if you mess it up, but you won't mess it up. So let's add that one to the cart. And as far as I can tell, that is the entire device. So here is our shopping cart. We're at a total of $164.85. We've got the GPS module, we've got the high gain antenna, we have the bigger battery, we have the solar panel that we're gonna cut the leads off of and put these leads on. We have the end connector to UFL connector. We have the starter kit that comes with the mesh-tastic chip and then we have that fancy unpronounceable waterproof enclosure that I like a lot. This one has a clear front end which makes it even cooler when you look up in the sky and you can see all the parts inside doing their things. And I guess at night you'd also see that LED going. So $164.85 gets you a solar mesh-tastic node. Not bad. Well that about wraps this one up. There are links in the description down below and stay tuned for a video on getting the firmware on this and getting it all set up to be your solar repeater. In the meantime, there's a video right over here I think you'll like next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.